Hi guys, I'm Megan Graham, and today I decided to make a little bit of a different video. So this has been on my mind for a while, and I've actually been wanting to talk to you guys about mold toxicity symptoms. Um, so obviously a lot of people see me on YouTube and I make a lot of videos about beauty and Yorkies and things like that. Um, in the background though, there's been something else going on. And I've really hesitated with whether it's something that I wanted to share because um, I've talked a little bit about it on and off, but not on a deeper level. And the more that I think about it, the more that I realize that um, a lot of people do not know how to recognize the symptoms of mold exposure. Um, when it happened to me, I really had no idea of what was happening. Um, I went from being very, very healthy to very, very sick in a short amount of time. And um, because I had a friend that was familiar with what was happening to me, I was finally able to figure it out. Um, had I not had that, I just can't imagine how sick I might have gotten. So um, today I wanted to tell the story of how I became sick from toxic mold and what that looks like. Because as much as some people might not relate to this experience, I think that knowing what it looks like and that it's probably not what you would expect for it to look like is really important because if it helps a few people realize what might be going on with them and it helps people to regain their health, then that is what is really important. Um, if people are interested in it, and actually maybe even if people are not interested in it, I'm going to make some videos talking about what I do um, and what I'm doing to heal from the mold as it is a pretty long process. Okay, so let's back it up. Um, I was actually thinking about how long ago this happened and I want to say that my mold exposure happened four years ago. Um, I thought that it was three years ago, but it's actually been four years since it happened. So four years ago, um, I was super, super healthy. Um, I had a lot of energy. I, my skin looked great. I was working out all the time. Um, I was very strong at the gym, had a great, you know, healthy diet. Um, I was going into New York sometimes for casting calls as a fitness model. I was a WBFF pro. Um, and I was traveling back and forth to Aspen, Colorado um, to see my then boyfriend, now husband, Jeff. Um, in that time, I never got sick. Um, I, I ran my own business and basically I was just feeling really good. So there was nothing in particular that I would complain about. Um, I think it was late May in 2017. So Jeff and I lived in a luxury rental building in Boston. Um, it's a very large company that owns the building that we lived in and everything in that building looked so perfect. Everything was shiny. Uh, the concierges were really amazing and it was just like I felt lucky to live there. Um, one day when I was at work, apparently there was a massive flood. Mm -hmm. So the sprinkler systems on the 14th floor burst and there was so much water that my husband told me that it sounded like there was a waterfall in the elevator. So the water went from floor 14 to floor two. And after that, they put in tons of dehumidifiers in the building. So looking back at it now, I realized that what they did after the flood was not enough to stop mold from growing. Um, so basically that day, I remember I felt so bad for the building. We were like dropping bagels off to the concierges. You know, everybody was like yelling at them. Everyone was upset. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad for the building. Well, within two weeks, my health that was really good started to, <laughs> sorry, I'll back that up. My health that was really good at the time started to deteriorate and I couldn't figure out why. So suddenly I became so tired that I could barely get out of bed in the morning, which was really unusual. Um, every time I would go to the gym, I just, I felt off. Like I kept complaining to my husband and saying, I don't know why, but I just, I feel like my legs are made of lead. I feel like I can't get my workout done. Um, I developed rosacea on my face. And so it looked like acne, but it was actually rosacea. Um, all of a sudden I couldn't sleep at night. Um, and I kept waking up and gasping for air. Um, at the time I didn't know what was going on. I actually developed sleep apnea. Um, so I was not, I was stopping breathing, um, while I was sleeping. 
Um, I developed hives under my arms and I had the worst bloating that I, I can ever describe. So almost anything that I would eat, my stomach would bloat out it painfully, painfully so, so much that my back was hurting. Um, and I couldn't figure out what it was. So I was trying to eliminate different foods. Was it fresh fruits? Was it fresh vegetables? additives i just couldn't put my finger on it but i was having painful bloating every single day that i couldn't control so that also made me not want to go to the gym right because you know i was tired anyway but then the bloating was embarrassing um there was nothing that i could wear that would cover up how bloated i was um there were so many other symptoms i constantly felt like i was getting sick um i was itchy I was sneezing a lot, um, I was coughing. There were just all sorts of things and they seemed really unrelated. Um, all of a sudden I had really high anxiety and not for any particular reason. So usually if you have anxiety, or at least if I have anxiety, there's a thing that I can put my finger on and I can know why it's happening. But in this case, there wasn't anything in particular and everything in my life seemed really good so I just couldn't figure out why it was happening. Um, I started taking more things at night, just trying to sleep. So I was, um, at one point, I think I was taking Benadryl and I don't, I can't remember if I was taking Tylenol PM. I was mixing different things, just trying to put myself to sleep. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. I was taking three children's Benadryl, which is more than you're supposed to take. Um, there were just so many different things happening and I couldn't put my finger on why it was happening. Um, so this lasted for a long time and I started changing things in my life. Um, I wouldn't go out to dinner past 6 p.m. because I thought maybe I just need to go to bed earlier and then I would feel better. Um, I was cutting tons of foods out. I was trying different supplements. Um, it was just one thing after another trying to find a solution and trying to understand why this might be happening. This lasted for almost a year. And I was so tired that I remember one night going out to dinner with my husband and I think I started crying at dinner because I was so tired. Um, I, I can't even explain to you, but I, I feel like I went from being, I think I was 40 or 41 at the time and all of a sudden, I felt like I had aged 35 years. I felt like I was at the end of my life. I was so tired. It's so hard to explain, but it was a really, really terrible feeling of extreme fatigue. Um, I had to pull myself together because, of course, I still owned my hair salon. Um, and I found myself, you know, canceling out my days earlier if I didn't have a client, just going home to rest and really not wanting to or being able to do anything. Um, and so, this lasted for quite a while and I went to my PCP and I think I had my annual exam. It was probably at the beginning of April. So if you can imagine, I went for about a year just kind of stumbling through my life, trying to figure out what was wrong and thinking that it must be something that I could solve on my own because, you know, I, someone had planted the seed that it might be mold, but I couldn't see anything and I couldn't smell anything. And I just couldn't imagine that in my luxury rental building that they wouldn't have done the right thing, that they would not have cleaned up the mold in the right way. And at the time, my friend who was pretty knowledgeable about mold said, look, that flood was so bad that if they weren't gutting that building, it's, it's going to be moldy. The building could not have dried out quickly enough. And I just didn't want to believe that it could be that. So, during this time, during this year, my dog Teddy, who was my oldest, um, he was my oldest Yorkshire Terrier and he had an autoimmune condition. Teddy had been in remission for years. After the flood, within a few months, he came out of remission and all of the things that I knew how to do to control his autoimmune disease no longer worked. Um, so, Initially, he was getting low doses of chemotherapy to keep his immune system in check and to keep it from attacking his brain, but it stopped working and it stopped sort of controlling the disease as well as it used to. So that was happening with Teddy at the same time. Um, 
Lola, my other Yorkie, developed pancreatitis during that time as well. Um, so she started just projectile vomiting. Um, and so there were all these different things happening. So I went to my doctor's, uh, my doctor's visit and I had been seeing this PCP probably since I was 24 years old. And you know, he asked me what was going on with my health and things like that. And I said, um, well, doctor, so-and-so, I won't say his name. Um, you know, there's, there's something going on with my health. Um, I said, I went from feeling fantastic and, you know, feeling younger than my age to having so little energy. I can barely get out of bed. Um, constant bloating. I'm always getting sick. Um, I got pneumonia that year. Um, my husband caught a cold and it turned into pneumonia in my body. Um, so I said, there's something wrong and we need to figure out what this is because this is not how a normal, I don't know, 40 or 41 year old should feel. I was like, I think that there's something extremely wrong with my body and I, I want to be tested and um, to figure out what's going on. So this might not be what would happen to all of you guys if you go to your regular PCP, but my PCP gave me a questionnaire on mental health. Um, so basically, the um, he was inferring that I was depressed or or that I was being a hypochondriac or that this was somehow a mental thing. And I'll be the first to tell you that, and this is probably one of the reasons why I had so much trouble actually making this video, I don't like to admit when I don't feel well. I always want to put on a really positive, brave face um, and it's just not something that I like to talk about. So we got nowhere. I mean, it was a completely useless appointment. Um, and so my friend who knew a lot about mold um, and happened to have a background in the medical field um, basically told me about something called a functional doctor. And I thought a functional doctor was a natural doctor. And she said, no, a functional doctor is not a natural doctor. A functional doctor is a doctor that actually tries to figure out how to backtrack with your health and figure out what went wrong. What was the deficiency or what was the exposure? What caused these symptoms that you're having? So instead of treating, you know, like my doctor said, you have IBS. And I was like, that's not a good enough explanation. This couldn't have just started out of nowhere. Um, so she, she sent me to this doctor and my first experience was that I went, I, I made the appointment and I went to this doctor's office and they completely screwed up my appointment. So, um, that doctor didn't have me in his books. Um, and so I wound up seeing the owner of the practice and I'll just say it was a, it was basically a waste of time. He was not a great doctor and he was not the doctor that she had sent me to. Um, when I told her what happened, she said, you know, you really have to go back and see the doctor that I sent you to. The other guy is not worth seeing. So I wasted some time there. Um, and then I got busy and I thought, well, he gave me some supplements. I'll take those. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't really get anywhere, but he had me do a lot of tests and things. So in that time, Teddy, my older dog got super, super sick and I became really busy with managing his illness. Um, mine was happening and I was super, super tired, but I felt like I didn't really have time to take care of myself. So another half a year passed. So now between my exposure initially, um, another, you know, now it's been a year and a half. Finally, and this is, this is awful, but Teddy died. Um, his, the chemotherapy was no longer working for him. There was not a single thing that I could do and, um, and I knew it was time. And so Teddy, Teddy died and it was awful. And then when I took my other two dogs in for their, for their yearly physicals, um, they were both having some weird issues. So, uh, Poppy had elevated liver levels and Lola's kidney levels were strange. So now Lola has pancreatitis. Um, and then both my dogs have weird levels for their detoxification organs. And I'm feeling sick every day. So at that point, I finally decided it couldn't be all of us. Like it's just not possible for all of us to be sick. Um, and Jeff was not 
there all the time, but when he was in the apartment, he said he always felt like he was coming down with a cold and he felt really puffy. Um, one thing that I want to add, um, just with that thought, is that two people could live in a moldy place and one of them could react much worse to the mold than the other. So your genetics do decide whether you have a terrible reaction or maybe less of a reaction, and some people may not react at all. So it really depends on the person, um, and that's where it gets a little bit hard, and that's where you could start to look a little bit crazy if, say, you're living with your husband and he feels fine and you don't feel fine, but the reason I'm bringing this up is just to point out that if anyone is having these symptoms or if they know someone that suddenly started to not feel well or just started feeling less well over time, I just wanted to give you food for thought for what it could be because this is a cumul cumulative thing. Get that word out. So I finally met up with the doctor that my friend had recommended me to and Initially, as soon as he started looking at me, um, he did a physical exam and he said, you know, one of the reasons that you're feeling like you're having trouble breathing is that you are very, you're having allergies to something and your throat is actually partially closed. Um, and so as we talked, that was really when I, I thought it was my imagination. I know it sounds crazy, but I felt like I was constantly having trouble breathing. And I thought, I'm just thinking about breathing too much, and that's why I'm having trouble breathing. Um, it wasn't that. I wasn't being a hypochondriac. It was literally that my throat was narrowing and it was hard for me to breathe. Um, so he said, you know what? It sounds like this could be mold um, exposure, but I think that we should have your apartment tested and we should run tests on you and let's really get to the bottom of this and run labs so we can see because many things are pointing at that but without the labs and without the results, we don't know. Um, so I had my apartment inspected and um, when the, so it did come back with mold um, and so I decided to have it remediated which really probably in retrospect was not the best idea but being that I have three dogs and it's really hard to find another apartment, I thought, this is me at the beginning as well, I just have to say, but I thought, you know what, it's so hard to move and so let me just make this place as safe as I possibly can. Um, and, and in my mind I thought, well definitely the building will, they will feel so bad and of course they're going to fix it. This is a really expensive place and of course they're going to want to fix it. Um, so first of all, the building in no way fixed the problem. They didn't pay for it. They didn't apologize. Um, they offered to put air filters into my apartment. Um, I can't say the name of the company, but it is a huge company and the name of the company rhymes with elated, but it's not elated, but it rhymes with elated. I mean, blind item, you guess. Anyway, um, they don't have a good reputation either, um, but I was really shocked because they had always seemed to be so nice. So I, okay, approached them, was shocked um, that they wouldn't fix it. You know, it was just, I, I didn't believe that that could possibly happen. I paid to have a remediation company come in and when they came in, they said, okay, so just so you can understand why you've been getting so sick, the AC and heating system in your apartment is hooked up completely wrong. It's been drawing air instead of just from your unit, which is how those little air handlers in small apartments work, it's actually not sealed. So it's drawing air up from the basement through the cavity of the building, which is exactly where they said a cavity is like, think of a cavity in a tooth. It's really gross. They said, that's how the cavity of this building is. Um, it's been wet. They didn't address it after the mold problem. So you're drawing that air straight up from the basement. It's really gross air. And then on top of it, the entire air conditioning closet was lined in fiberglass. So um, anyway, that's why the air was so gross. And they sealed it off with stainless steel. They cleaned all the ductwork. 
and the air made a huge difference. You could actually feel the difference within, um, a, I would say like as soon as they were done, you felt a difference. But as I was breathing in that air, I did feel there was a big difference. I was still living, mind you, in a moldy building. So it was by no means perfect. Um, I think I put in about five high powered air filters and my husband and I started looking for places to buy immediately and it took us a very 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 long time um for sure and of course my test results came back and i did have high levels of mold toxins in my body which you really shouldn't have any levels of mold toxins in your body um so some people people like me lack the ability to take the mold toxins out of their body once they come in so mold toxins, think of them as a poison. They're in no way good for your body and they start affecting you right in your gut. So you ingest a lot of the mold. It sits in dust in your home. Um, it can be in the air, but a lot of the ways that we are we actually ingest mold is actually just through dust. If it's kicking up, if it's on um, any of our eating utensils, I mean, there's so many different ways. Um, and just when we're breathing as well. So it first affects our gut and from our gut, it can affect just about every other organ of our body, which is why the symptoms of mold exposure are so confusing because they're so diffuse. They're all over your body and they seem unrelated. So, you know, the, uh, the skin, the fatigue, the hives, all of that was related to mold. Um, and so that was really the beginning of my healing process. And I went to a functional doctor. He put me on binders and on a treatment plan to actually help to pull the mold out of my body. Um, and I think that in, in, you know, sort of future videos, I do want to talk about what that looked like, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like when you get sick from mold. Um, there can be a lot of depression, anxiety, mood swings. Um, one thing that I didn't mention is that my hormones were very impacted by the mold. And um, one thing to know is that it is treatable, but you need to fix the problem. Um, you do need to find a good doctor and it should be a functional doctor because unfortunately, one of the things that my friend taught me is that they don't really teach doctors in traditional medical school how to deal with these things which is really problematic because mold is in approximately 50% of homes. Um, most people don't know that you should be cleaning out your AC regularly. If there is a water leak, you need to remove the damaged material, replace it, and fix the leak. Um, I have learned to look at real estate and to spot potential mold problems because when I was looking for a place, I didn't want to bounce from one moldy place to another moldy place. So it's a, it's a pretty big problem. Um, and basically I was in that apartment for a year and a half before I found the problem. And then I think I was in it for another year and a half after I found it because first we were looking, I think for places outside the city that didn't work. Um, and then we started looking in the city and then we had all of the shutdowns due to the virus. So I was actually stuck in that apartment as were my dogs for a really long time. Um, and it was definitely anxiety producing because, and I, I do have this little poppy's been sitting on my lap the entire time. She's so cute. Um, but I, I felt really bad that I couldn't get my, my babies out of there. I couldn't get my myself out of there. Um, and then finally this past August we moved and we are in a new place which is healthy. Nothing is perfect. I do think there's mold in every single place. Um, it's really if you can keep the levels low enough for it to be healthy enough for you. Um, but now that I'm finally in a place that is not adding to the burden of my mold, now I can work on basically emptying it out of my body and getting better. Um, but so one of the things that I just wanted to share with you guys is that if you find that there is something that is suddenly making you feel off, um, I think it's really important to trust your gut and to trust yourself. Um, and one of the reasons that I wanted to share this is that I have found, so I own a hair salon on Newberry Street in Boston, 
And I have talked to many, many clients that have actually had the same problem that I have. And they wouldn't have known what was going on with them if I hadn't, I guess I'm just a very talkative person and I share my experiences. And um, this has been such a big experience for me. And I will say that I spend a lot of my time, my free time doing things to heal from this and to nourish my body and to get better. Um, and so I talk about it because it's become a really, it's become a big part of my life. And I always work to reframe the experience because it's really easy to say, why did this happen to me? Um, and I think it's important to reframe it and say, why did this, why is this happening for me? Um, and I think that this happened for me so that I could share the experience with people who might never figure out why their body is so inflamed and so irritated and why they feel so tired and they feel unable to do their daily tasks. Um, I am on the road to being myself again, but it's actually not as fast as I would sometimes like it to be. Um, I think a lot of people think that it should just be a few weeks and then all of a sudden you're back to yourself, but it is a big thing to come back from when all of your systems have been greatly impacted. Um, and so I've been working at it, but it's very impactful. And my goal is just to share with other people this experience. Um, if you think that this is something that you might also have been exposed to, um, a few resources that I really, really like um, that I'm going to list below. I like the book Toxic by Neil Nathan. It talks about mold exposure and exactly what happens to our bodies and some potential ways to treat it. Um, I do think you should always be working with uh, some kind of a functional doctor to guide you in your healing process because it is not something you can figure out yourself and it's not something you can diagnose yourself either. Um, I really like the product, I guess the, the product brand, it's called Microbe Formulas. They have a very comprehensive um, set of I guess, do they call them nutraceuticals? I think they're nutraceuticals. So they're supplements um, to use to heal your body as you work through this. Um, there's an Instagram account I like to follow. I, her name is, I think, Doc, Doc Jess MD, I think, Doc doctor period Jess MD. Um, she's great too. So there's a lot of people. You can also learn from Dr. Mark Hyman on, um, so that's Mark Hyman on Instagram. Um, please feel free to ask your questions below. Um, this is just such an interesting topic, but I really wanted to share it because I think anybody that's seen um, my Instagram or they've seen my YouTube knows that I'm a pretty authentic person. And um, I will say that even family members were very skeptical about this happening because if you look at me, I think I look like I'm okay. So I think it's confusing for people when someone looks okay. Um, but I am going to share um, a before and after that shows how I looked um, before I started taking any binders to remove some of the mold toxins um, and then how I looked 10 days later. Um, it looked like I was using drugs and I you know, would try to cover it up with makeup, but the makeup just didn't do enough. Um, so anyway, please feel free to comment below. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm going to be doing some other videos telling you about some of the things that I do for my health as I work to recover from my mold illness. Um, and when I disappear a little bit from YouTube or I don't answer questions, it's usually that I'm feeling tired from the things that I'm doing as I work to get better because my energy is not always super stable um, and I need to use a lot of my energy to be able to perform at my job. So so a lot of times I expend so much energy on my work days and then I really take it easy the other days because I only have so much energy every single week. Um, I really enjoyed sharing this with you guys. Um, please feel free to hit the like button, um, follow my YouTube and feel free to share a question or comment below. Have you ever had a friend or family member or a personal experience with mold, I'm really curious to hear. Stay healthy and stay beautiful and I will talk to you guys soon.